Jurassic! Hey everybody, Dr. O here. This is part two of the series where I'm just briefly introducing the different types of microbes you're going to be exposed to, pun intended, in microbiology this semester, uh, mainly just so you recognize them. Like, we'll talk about specific examples when we need to. So I left for this second video um, all the different eukaryotes. So we already talked about viruses, which aren't cells, and the bacteria, which are your prokaryotes, and then your archaea. But now we're going to talk about the different types of eukaryotic organisms that are a part of microbiology. So we have the protists and the fungi. And we'll, go, we'll, we'll even go through the par multicellular parasites here at the end. So just real quickly, like as a group, what I find most interesting or something we have to pay the most attention to is if you're trying to kill a pathogen that's a eukaryote, it is much more difficult. That's because these cells are eukaryotes, so are your cells. So we have to find chemicals that kind of like using chemotherapy to kill cancer, right? We have to find chemicals that can kill the pathogen without harming the host. It's a lot easier when you're dealing with a bacteria that is so much different than us. So that's just kind of important generally. So here the first group I want to talk about are the protozoa. So these are single-celled eukaryotes. Um, they would fall under that category of protist because they're not they're not plants or animals or fungi. Um, so they, they, they go around and they actually will uh, in, absorb and ingest uh, organic chemicals like we do. So uh, many of them are parasitic, but they can also be free living. Uh, the ones we care about, I'll just give you a few that will come up this semester. We have Giardia lamblia, so that's a pretty common organism leading to uh, diarrhea, getting it from contaminated water is pretty common. Um, toxoplasmosis, so Toxoplasmosis gondii is, is something we'll definitely talk about because it can lead to all uh, interesting things in cats or actually in and rodents that are attracted to cats, but also can cause problems in some humans. And then here what you're looking at is Nagleria fowleri, hard to want to say. Um, this is the brain-eating amoeba, which only slightly more than 100 Americans have ever been infected with it, but it's actually in lots of places, but it kills almost everyone. I believe there's only been three Americans that have been infected with the brain-eating amoeba that have survived. So, all right, those are protozoa. Uh, next, you have your fungi, often called fungi. It just depends on where you're from and, and uh, um, how you learned it. So they are, they are eukaryotes. Um, same thing, they're going to absorb chemical energy from their environment. Uh, the key thing here is that if they're single-celled organisms, if they're unicellular, they're going to be yeast like this here. This is Candida albicans, which can lead to um, vaginal yeast infections or oral thrush. So this would be a yeast, a single-celled fungi. If you have multicellular fungi, those are going to be your molds and your mushrooms. So we definitely won't be talking about mushrooms in, in class unless we're talking about how tasty the morel mushrooms are. But molds are clearly significant. Molds can lead to to many different types of infections. Uh, they can lead to uh, chronic inflammatory response sy syndrome that can make people very ill as well. So we'll talk about them some. So those are your fungi, your yeasts and your molds primarily. And then we have the algae. Uh, I like to think of algae as just single-celled plants, right? They, they have cellulose cell walls just like plants do. They're photosynthetic just like plants, produce oxygen, produce their own carbohydrates. So they really, really are a single-celled version of a plant, if you want to look at it that way. Um, if you ever hear about diatoms or diatomaceous earth, so diatoms are a type of algae. That's kind of interesting, I guess, more than anything. And then the last group is the multicellular animal parasites. They are eukaryotic. They're, they're small animals. They are not... Um, technically microorganisms, right? But they have mi micro microscopic stages in their life cycle. But you can say that about everything, right? I was microscopic at one point, I guess. Uh, but that we do, we classify, we, we teach about them in microbiology because they are, they are, they, they cause infectious diseases. So um, often these are not gotten, gotten from per person to person. They come from water and those types of things. So what you're looking at here, so we'll, we'll cover several interesting examples throughout the semester, but um, what you're looking at here is Dracunculus medinensis, which is the, which is, uh, as you see what it's actually, as you can, it's the guinea worm is what it's called. You can see that that's actually a matchstick. So this, this, um, this organism is coming out of this person's foot to lay eggs by the thousands and how you extract them is you slowly um, wind them around a stick or in this case it, look, it looks like it's a match but you can only do a little bit at a time because you don't want to actually tear it so then you would tape this and the next day you try to pull it out some more. Um, thankfully the guinea worm is almost gone because of our ability to filter water to remove uh, the guinea worm's eggs. Uh, the guinea, guinea worm is hopefully the next disease that, that may just be completely eradicated. We'll see. Alright, so those are the eukaryotic microorganisms that will be covered here in microbiology. I hope this helps. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.